back with you once again, and I, I've got to admit to you, today's show is going to be a little bit difficult for me to do, in that I, I suppose that I'm going to have to eat a little bit of crow. I'm going to have to walk back, at least to some degree, a statement that I made on here a couple weeks ago on this show. Um, you know, I, I don't like to come out and admit that I'm wrong, uh, mainly because, at least in, in terms of significant issues, I very rarely am wrong. I'm reminded of an old line from the old TV show All in the Family. Archie Bunker once said, I'll gladly admit I'm wrong if I ever am. I'm not sure that I would say I was entirely wrong on this statement, but it sure didn't work out the way that I initially thought it would. A couple of weeks ago, on the cusp and on the eve of the South Carolina primary, I came out here and I told you that what the conservatives need to do is to rally behind one candidate and coalesce around one candidate and end this infighting between the Rick Santorum and, and uh, the Newt Gingrich parties and coalesce around one guy, challenge Mitt Romney, have that fight with him, have it once and for all and end this thing and take the nomination away from Romney. I still believe that, by the way. That part of what I said uh, was correct then and I believe it's still correct today. We need to take the fight to Romney and the sooner we can do that the better. The sooner we can set aside these other battles of who's going to lead the conservatives or who the conservatives are going to get behind, the better. Now I told you at that time that since we needed to coalesce around one guy and since Newt Gingrich at that point, right before the South Carolina primaries, had a roughly 20 point lead in, in the polls over Santorum, and since Santorum had, for whatever reason, failed to capitalize on the momentum of his Iowa win or second place finish, depending on how you look at it, and since Santorum had frankly made the, the error of going up to New Hampshire and spending money and time and effort up there in a state he was never going to win, and really kind of short-circuited himself at that point, I told you that the best thing to do was to get behind Newt Gingrich, and that Newt Gingrich's recent debate performances really showed us a glimpse of what he could do against Barack Obama come the general election and how he could really just eviscerate Barack Obama in a debate and how he could make Obama look like an absolute fool for what he believed in and therefore make all of the leftists in America look like absolute fools for what they believe in and I really wanted that. I wanted to see someone go on a debate stage and not only beat Barack Obama but beat him up. You'll remember I used that line. Well, I still think Newt Gingrich could do that, but I have to tell you, uh, despite the fact that Gingrich won South Carolina and won it pretty handily, things sort of fell off the rails for him after that. The neutron bomb imploded, if you will. Now, you'll remember that even though I, I advocated that we get behind Newt Gingrich at that point, that I still had misgivings about him. You know, I, I told you that I wasn't sure he was entirely a conservative, but I told you also. And, and certainly if you go back in his career, you'll see that. You know, the park bench with Nancy Pelosi and, you know, the belief in global warming at one point. That's not a real good thing, among many other things. And he, he was in, involved in that compassionate conservative era that most of us would rather forget actually happened. And he was for different kinds of health care programs, not as drastic as Obamacare. But still, he was for those. And at the time that Republicans were looking to do that. And that's something that it, it should never be a part of government. So there were misgivings about Newt Gingrich. But I told you at the time that I thought Newt Gingrich's uh, political life hung in our hands. And for that reason, he might be faithful to us if only out of pragmatism, if only out of self-preservation, if only out of the fact that we were the key to him becoming president in his, in his lifetime or not. And I thought maybe he would allow us to have the power over him uh, that we desire, and that he could sort of be an intellectual mercenary for us, kind of an attorney on a grand scale to to argue our case before the American people and put into play what we want. I'm not so sure about that now. And you'll remember, even, even as I told you that we should get behind Gingrich, I told you that I preferred Rick Santorum, and I still do. I told you that if it came down to you, you would just allow me to install a president between Rick Santorum and Newt Gingrich, I'd pick Santorum every time, and I still believe that way. So even though I had misgivings, I told you that at that point, with a 20-point lead in the polls, with all the momentum in his direction, with positive debate performances, and with Rick Santorum failing to capitalize on the momentum that he had, and also with the imperativeness of deciding on a conservative candidate and fighting Mitt Romney, the sooner the better, I told you to get behind Newt Gingrich. Well, 
I'm going to adjust that position. I'm not going to go so far as to say I was wrong. Uh, given the facts on the ground at the time and given the specific situation we were in a couple weeks ago, I would have a hard time saying that put in that same specific situation again that I wouldn't make the same decision. But the situation has drastically changed since then. After Gingrich wins South Carolina, he goes on down to Florida to battle Romney. Very important primary there. Romney wins. Romney wins pretty handily. And Gingrich comes out and says, well, you know, he threw all these attack ads down there on me, and, and he did. Romney played pretty dirty down there, there's no question about it. But I don't know that we can blame the attack ads in and of themselves for the poor performance of Newt Gingrich in Florida. Something struck me about that couple of weeks down there in Florida, and the debates that were down there, and the different sound bites and so forth that came out. For my money, Newt Gingrich really strayed off a message in Florida. He really went off the reservation down there. He stopped talking about things like a flat tax, which he'd mentioned prior to going into South Carolina. I'm, I'm, I'm begging a, a real genuine presidential candidate to talk about a flat tax, and Gingrich did initially, but well, that was gone once he went to Florida. He didn't really, he, he tried to attack Romney on Romney Care, but didn't do it very convincingly. And remember all that talk about judicial restraint and reining in the, the judicial branch of government that Gingrich had, had mentioned in previous debates? Well, all that was gone when he went down to Florida, too. Instead, all Gingrich seemed to talk about Florida was a lunar base on the moon, more space exploration? Really? Do we have the money for that? No, we don't have the money for that. But he wants to go flying to the moon. And he's talking about Mitt Romney's taxes and Mitt Romney's vulture capitalism and all the horrible things he did. Newt! I've said it before, I've said it again. Mitt Romney's experience in business, Mitt Romney's wealth, if you want to call it that, is one of the few things that we actually respect about him. You can attack Mitt Romney on a hundred things. Why are you going there? And that really, uh, really didn't set well, at least with me, and, and I would suspect for a lot of other conservatives as well. And Gingrich lost. He lost pretty bad. And I think that his, his lack of ability to stay on message. I think he also had a couple of poor debate performances where he just was not on his game, and Rick Santorum came out very well in those debates. And Santorum, you know, he knew he didn't have a shot in Florida, but he just kind of kept plugging away and steady as she goes. And he had a couple of great debate performances. He had a couple of situations there where he was able to draw a clear distinction between himself and the combination of Gingrich and Romney on health care. He eviscerated him on that. He eviscerated Ron Paul on foreign policy. I've been begging someone to do that. Heck, Santorum showed that he's the best of the bunch when it comes to foreign policy. He has a true understanding of what our conflict in the Middle East is and will continue to be, and what our potential conflicts are in South America, and that there are people in this world, some very bad people, that want to destroy America and kill us all. And he knows they're all over the world. They're not just in the Middle East. They're in South America. They're in Mexico. They're all over the place. And he knows that we have to be on alert against them. Frankly, Santorum came out of this, even though he lost badly in Florida, which no one thought he wouldn't, he came out of this smelling like a rose. And then we get to last Tuesday. Set of three primaries in Cox's. Missouri, which didn't count because it was a, there's a long story behind that. I live in this state. It's, it's, it's the height of hilarity what happened here. Uh, something about Missouri trying to jump the gun and get ahead of other states in, the, in awarding delegates to the Republican Party, slapping their hands, saying, no, you can't do that. So what we ended up having was an election that had already been planned, a primary that had already been planned, but no delegates were going to get awarded from it. So there's going to be a caucus in March where the delegates actually get awarded. So this is really a beauty contest. But Rick Santorum won the beauty contest, won it in going away, really. And certainly that gives him some momentum, clearly. You combine it with the fact that he won Minnesota, and he won Colorado, which surprised me. And Mitt Romney got beaten in Colorado. Now, Santorum has done something that I thought was impossible just a couple of weeks ago. He has grabbed back the conservative momentum in this race. And he's done it because Newt Gingrich imploded. Because Newt Gingrich went off message. Because Newt Gingrich couldn't get himself to talk about the flat tax. Couldn't get himself to really hammer Romney on Romney Care down in Florida. Couldn't get himself to keep talking about judicial restraint. No, Newt Gingrich came across as one of those people that Never met an idea that he didn't like. And anytime some 
Some debate moderator brought up some asinine idea like space exploration. Well, he had to think of a way that he could make it work. Newt, that's not what we want. We don't want a candidate who will make bad ideas work, who will find a way to make bad ideas work. We want someone who's going to cut the government and defend our liberties. That's it. That's all. That's all we want. Maybe it's so simple that you don't get it. Maybe you're making it too complicated, but that's really all we want. Defend our property, defend our liberties, seal up the border, and cut government. You do that, we're behind you. And when you were talking about that, you were good as gold. But you went off on that. You went off on that. You went off the reservation. You know, I'm not telling you that Rick Santorum is perfect. I have my misgivings about him too, and I've told you that all along. Santorum is not in favor of any kind of a flat tax. He's made that very clear. He does want to uh, you know, make adjustments to the tax code we have, which is long overdue, but I've, I've always said all along that as long as you have any kind of a graduated income tax, as long as you have any kind of a progressive tax system, you are going to have an unfair tax system. You need to go to a consumption-based flat tax. Santorum is not convinced of that. Although I like what he's saying about the capital gains tax and reducing that. That is smart. Santorum often talks about maintaining the safety net, maintaining programs like Social Security and Medicare, and making sure that they're around for future generations. And that makes my skin crawl. I don't want those programs around for future generations. I want to hear a candidate talk about how we can most intelligently phase out those programs, how we can phase out that safety net that is really just a glass ceiling for the poor, that makes sure they can't rise above their, their current level. So Santorum's not perfect, but he has been consistent, even on the things I disagree with him on. You never get the feeling that he's trying to just say what you want to hear in order to appeal to you. You've always got that from you. He's the best of the bunch on foreign policy, as I said earlier. And as I have said for the better part of a month, it's time to end this fight and get behind one candidate and beat Mitt Romney, because every day we don't, Romney goes in there and takes another primary with 30% of the vote, or 35% of the vote, and as long as that keeps happening, the closer we're going to get to having a GOP presidential candidate that does not represent the party, and that does not represent the conservative majority within the party. Period. Now, we can talk till we're blue in the face about the differences between Newt and Rick. We can have that debate, but we've had it for a month now. The longer we have that debate, the more it plays into Mitt Romney's hands. And the scariest thing I can think of is a general election between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney, because all you have at that point is one liberal versus another. And yes, Romney is a slightly less offensive liberal than Obama. And he would be better than Obama. But in the long term, looking beyond 2012, for the long term future of America, Mitt Romney is dangerous. Mitt Romney does not believe in true conservatism, no more than Barack Obama does. So we cannot allow him to have the nomination. If it is Santorum that must be the guy to face Romney, then so be it. Let's get behind him. Gingrich had that opportunity, he blew it. But what we have to do is end this now. Get behind Santorum. Get him in these primaries, even those of you down in the South, I know you like Newt Gingrich, but you've got to get behind Santorum now. He is our only hope. Get behind Santorum, reduce this to a one-on-one -on -one fight. And I know people are saying he can't beat Barack Obama in a general election. I think that's bull. I think that's hogwash. Because think about what we're looking at. We're looking at an incumbent president in a bad economy, and I know all these liberals are telling you the economy's improving. Well... You go, ask that, you go ask that question to anybody who's currently out of work or anybody who's struggling to save a little bit of money or buy a house. You ask them how well the economy is doing. They don't care what some economist says on paper. They care about what their bank account says. They care about what their 401k says. You'd have a hard time getting most of the American people to say, yes, I genuinely believe the economy is better, even if some economists put some numbers down on paper that make it appear to be better. So you're looking at an incumbent president with a bad economy, you're looking at a president who said he would unify the American people, but has only divided them further. So he has no advantages. 
People are saying Santorum can't win because of his stances on social issues. Let me be clear about this. First of all, I agree with most of Santorum's uh, beliefs on social issues, but even if I did not, even if I did not agree with his view on things like gay marriage or the prevalence of the traditional American family structure, even if I disagree with him on those things, I would still vote for him against Obama because he's better on fiscal policy, not perfect, but better. He's far better on foreign policy. And given this economy, given where we're at right now, if you're going to tell me that the American people are going to vote for a socialist incumbent president who has been a failure in the most important issue of the economy, if you're telling me they're going to vote for him instead of Rick Santorum, simply because Rick Santorum is against something like gay marriage, or simply because Rick Santorum won't provide free birth control to unmarried people, really? You're, you're, you're going to sacrifice your freedoms and, the, and you're going to sacrifice the future of this country because you want gay people to get married? Or because you want single people who are out whoring around to get free birth control? Really? That's the priority? Those are higher priorities to you than our fiscal future or than our future at all, or than your liberties? I don't think the American people are going to do that. But if they do, if that's really where their priorities are, then quite frankly, America is dead. At that point, America's gone. There will be no hope then. There's no, no political party, no Republican party, no conservative movement that can help at that point. If the morality and the focus of the American people is that low, that they would still vote for a failure of a president because they think that's better than someone who is conservative on social issues, then it's done. It's all over with at that point. America is no different from Europe at that point. It's done. So I'm giving the American people a little bit more credit than that. And I'm willing to bet on the American people. And I think that given a choice between Santorum and a failure like Barack Obama, they will pick Rick Santorum. It won't even be a choice. So I'm a little bit more optimistic than some. But as I've said all along, even though beating Barack Obama is very important, I think right now the most important issue is to beat Mitt Romney. Because any of the candidates out there can beat Barack Obama. I'm convinced of that. But let's make sure the right one for our future beyond 2012 is the one who gets elected. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.